If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. All right, welcome back in. This is segment number two of the Bryant McKinney Show on WNST.net, and we are live at Greenmount Station in Carroll County, Hampstead, one of my favorite places. Find out more about this great spot. By the way, crab um, cakes. Uh, hang on. The crab and spinach quesadilla of 13 and a half. I will be ordering another one. I'm getting a bite. Uh, okay, maybe. You know, ever since we got rid of pita, we stopped ordering tofu and Dude, mushroom right. sandwiches. Hang, hang, and hang, sandwiches. We got a chance. We got. We're getting meat on this show this year. All right. Let's first of all, please everyone, give it up once more for world champion Baltimore Ravens left tackle Brian McKinney. Dennis All right, uh, Dennis, who was uh, certainly we're, we're wishing him a speedy recovery, hoping to see him. Love Dennis. I saw him today. Gave him a hug. We're, we're Dennis. We did a guys. Um, he would go to some of the best restaurants in the area and would say, "Sir, may I have your mushroom sandwich?" Just mushrooms? What the hell is that? It's a fungus sandwich. What kind of man eats mushroom sandwiches? Dennis Pitta. That's what I'm saying. So, so we're at the Super Bowl. Did you get your own podium at the media day? Did you, you had your own big thing? Well, I guess you're big enough, Dan. Dennis had his, and we were going around talking. Everybody asking questions, and finally we came over to Dennis, and someone had a purple wig, and they asked Dennis if he would wear it, and Dennis is like, "Sure, give it to me." Dennis put it on. It was this gigantic purple wig, and he sat up there and answered questions for the last ten minutes wearing the purple wig, and Glenn cuts through the crowd, moves to the front, and says. Why do you like mushroom sandwiches? I did do that. And all of the media that guys are like, what are you talking about? That did happen. And media day was a joke, though. You know and that. And Dennis says, I'm not answering any questions <laughs> from you. He did say that. <laughs> exactly how it went. But, but my idea was, I really wanted to find my way onto the official transcripts. I don't know if you know this about Super Bowl League, because you were busy trying to win a game. But every time someone asked you a question, there was some employee that was sitting nearby Transcribe. that was transcribing sure. the questions and answers. That's how I wrote the book. I yeah. used a lot of those quotes for you know parts of the book. So everything you said that week appeared on official transcription. So I was just looking forward to I have back. it in my bag. I'll read his transcript right now yeah. and see if he gave any good answers. I, I was just looking forward to going back and having to see that Dennis Pitta had to answer a question without much. That's fine. I thought that it would work out. What was the dumbest question you got all Super Bowl week? Okay, totally. question. No, all right. <laughs> well, I came and found you on Media Day. And you were kind of mobbed on Media Day. So I remember you were quite the popular man on Media Day. Um, I can't remember the dumbest question, but I probably tried to block it out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later, you're like, did that really happen? Did that really happen? Did we really do that? We signed up for 15 more weeks and get questions from us on Wednesday night. So. <laughs> Correct. All right, let's talk about Cleveland on Sunday. Um, good to face an opponent you're familiar with, I'm sure, but you know that part of that is you're going to get the chance to go up a guy against a guy that you know pretty well. Tell me about Paul Kruger. Tell me about what it's going to be like to, to be on the opposite side facing him on Sunday and what Paul Kruger brings to the table. They have a new um, defense similar to ours, actually. Um, Three, four. Paul. Um, we gotta change some things for Paul because Paul probably knew the cadence. Yeah. Yeah. So, kind of so you know it's funny you say that because a lot of times you hear coaches say, ah, there's you know that's minimal what, what these guys can possibly. Well, they always ask about it. You're always asking right. like, you know, what could Stokely help us with Denver last yeah. week? What could Elvis help us with? Mm -hmm. And, and I, usually you don't think it's much, but if it's something like cadence, right. That doesn't mean much to the fans, but it means everything when you're down there flying, right? Yeah. So, I mean, he's familiar with that, so some things will probably change on the first How could that help him? Just know, know. just know, yeah. just know. Okay. I, saw I mean, it's some of our terminology, too, because, uh, you know, he's been here, so hearing, you know, us communicate with each other, he probably wouldn't know what some of it is. So, so when you yell defense. something out at the line, if Joe yells something out at the line, he might Maybe recognize. Maybe Joe, but it's not Joe. It could be like Marshall saying something to Mike or something okay. like that. And if he's just been hearing it at practice, he probably could possibly pick up on what it is. So he, you, you would have to be concerned about the language. You have to. Yeah. This week, you have to think about that. You have to say, hey, we might want to change the, uh -huh. what we call this blocking scheme. We, we might, might want to change some things. I'll be bringing these there. Right. So, I mean, you know, people that was with us. Yeah, he was here two weeks ago, yeah. right? He was with us all through training camp, so. Well, Harbaugh mentioned that today. He mentioned, like, you know, Graham's running all Exactly. Right. So, right. 
Yeah, you gotta be just very careful, but I'm pretty sure he's telling me everything he knows. But, but the kind of player that Paul Kruger is, like, with, with you, because you're, I'm assuming, at some point, going to be asked with Blockman on Sunday. What do you know you're going to need to do in order to stop Paul Kruger? Um, get off the ball. I mean, he's a, he's a guy who likes to get sacked, so you have to be pretty good at pass protection, man. And, I don't know his move that he likes to do. I've seen it on Tell me, game. just give it away. Tell me, what's his move? He runs up and he does like this stutter inside, then swatch your hands, and comes back outside and swatch your hands. And he gets around. You're not going to let it do he's that. Trying to freeze, he's trying to freeze off of the lineman. He could maybe do that to a world champion. He's not doing that to a veteran like Ryan McKinney. <laughs> he's not doing that to a world champion like Ryan McKinney. Has anybody ever like gone out and had your lunch for a day? I mean, like. Have you, have you had a guy where you're like, I, I can't stop? I mean, at any point in your career, somebody that just. For whatever reason, they had a move you couldn't handle. Because it would never be about it would never be about strength, right? A guy that beat you, it's all about speed or about a, a technique of some kind. Because they're just not going to pancake you, you know. It was um, he didn't. It wasn't like constantly, but just every time at the beginning of my career, like probably the first two years, he really started shifting. My third and fourth year was KGB from Green Bay. Oh. It. Every time I had to go again, <laughs> my first two years, and then, then my third year, was like the light bulb went off, and I figured out like how to just. What was his move? Stop. What, what was it? He was just a speed rusher, period. And just anytime he went to Green Bay, it was already loud, so he would get off the ball. He just he had a lot of objections, so he actually helped me kind of get used to going against all these different speed rush guys. And, um, it does make you better, right? I mean, it's like playing tennis against somebody that's better. It makes you better. Two times a year, and it kind of makes you get better and try to figure out how you can stop them. But it definitely was. I always go back and say him because he was, um, I had to go against the most. How much better are the Browns? You know, a lot of people are going to say, hey, they lost their home. They lost their home to Miami. They can't be very good. But they, they at least the, you mentioned the new coordinator, Ray Gordon, who comes from Arizona where he did wonders for everything. Chad Pittsburgh, did he use yeah. Pittsburgh back then? Um, no, no, I was the coordinator in Miami. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Did he recruit you? Uh, well, our keyhole did, but. Okay. Um, but their front seven is actually pretty good. Um, Sheard is really good. Yeah. And their front seven is pretty good. Phil Taylor? Yeah, so. Dequel's still in there, right? I mean, we know Dequell a lot around here because of like, Maryland. He's wearing his yeah. turf suit. Oh, okay. Two and zero, University of Maryland. So it's he's nice. happy now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I got on Glenn in a meeting the other day. We have our Tuesday sales meeting downstairs. I said to Glenn, I said, so, so Towson beat Connecticut, and he said, yeah. And I said, Maryland's playing Connecticut. Yeah. I said, well, what happens if Connecticut beats Maryland? Does that make Towson beat Connecticut beat it's Maryland? Maryland. Right. It's the prayer. We agree. By the way, we're very similar. You guys beat a team. You beat Florida. Well, we beat the Florida National. That's so we're just not all the beating. Same. <laughs> <laughs> the big man, I'm gonna get we're up. We're all beating Florida schools. Hey, give it an Let's do this. Here. Let's do an introduction. Let's do this. Why don't we take a break and do it right? Because we gotta do one. Nah, just come on. We'll just right. say hello. And then, all right. You know. This is the Brian McKinney Show. We are live out here at Greenmount Station in Carroll County. I gave this guy a, like a royal invitation tonight for some crab cakes up here in Carroll County. He and said, where is it? I said, you just go to the farm and just drive north. Right. Right there, to the right -hand right. Side. That's where you'll find it. That's well, a Dundalk guy talking. Yeah. Well, hang on. You were, we were talking about uh, Florida, and this is a guy from Florida. Mm -hmm. This is a Florida guy. He... Now, with Anquan Bolden gone, is the king of Pahokee in Baltimore. <laughs> He's the king of Pahokee in Baltimore. He is, um, oh boy, this is actually uncomfortable. He's a defensive lineman slash linebacker. Yes, sir. He is Pernell McPhee. Make some noise for him, ladies and gentlemen. He's the king of Pahokee now. In the Ravens locker room. In the Ravens locker room. This is a true story, Brian. So uh, we brought Pernell out. Every year we, we, when, uh, we bring a bunch of rookies out to do a show. When, when they come in, when they first get drafted. And this was the year of the lock -in. So the rookie show was late. It was late in August. And Brunel came out and I believe used the exact term, King of Pahokee. <laughs> he said, King of Pahokee on the radio show. And so we tweeted that out. We tweeted out that Pernel McPhee had declared himself the King of Pahokee. Now, I know Anquan well enough to know, I don't think he runs his own Twitter account. I don't think he's that concerned about his own Twitter account. But whoever saw it, Anquan apparently told them to respond back by, to Pernell by sending a picture via Twitter of the fact that the high school football stadium is named after Anquan Bolden, just to counter Purnell's claim that he was the king of Pahokee. 
So I don't think Purnell, I think he backed off a little bit after that. Yeah. I think, is that the way it went? You sort of bowed down a little bit to Anquan after that point? Yeah, I bowed down. <laughs> <laughs> it was up more, it, it, oh, I got too much respect for Bo to get in one of the conversation. <laughs> did either of you guys watch, uh, I mean, did, I wouldn't even talk, I know you were watching tennis on Sunday. Did you watch any football, Brian? Mm -hmm. I watched um, Detroit and uh, the Vikings game. Okay. I watched um, Eagles and, uh, and uh, Eagles and Washington. Okay, so you didn't watch any Green Bay San Francisco? Oh, yeah, I watched that too. Pernell, did you watch any Green Bay San Francisco? Yes, I had to. How, I said, all right, understand, every person in Baltimore was banging their head on something every time Anquan Bolden made a catch in that game. <laughs> what was it like for you guys to see your old teammate Anquan Bolden? I tweeted and I congratulated him on having such a good game. I mean, That's the right thing to do. Yeah, it was like, wow. <laughs> reality. <laughs> it's reality. That's the game. It's reality. You know, that, that was um, most definitely um, one of the reasons why we went to New Orleans and won the game because of 81, you know. And with him out the locker room, you know, it's, such, it's different. Yeah. You know, his leadership, you know, passion for the game. And, you know, he, he, he showed the young receivers the way. Now, and, you know, it's funny because we were talking about this before, that a year ago it wasn't just Ray, it was Ray, and, Ed, and he's another guy that's on that list. Um, I don't think people got to know him as well, though. He didn't do quite as much, any, many appearances. He was, you know, himself, his family, he kind of kept around that group. What was Anquan like in the locker room for you guys? What was his role, his responsibility? Uh, Anquan was definitely the leader, um, a leader, especially with the receivers. And he kind of told them what to do and how to you know, be a pro and stuff like that. So we were looking at some good news and shit. For now, did you look to him as like a Pahokee guy? Was he a, like a role model of sorts for you? Of course, he's a legend, man. He's one of a kind. The, um, hold all high school records down there, Pahokee, you know, um, just like good face for our community, you know. Um, Positive guy. And he still does stuff down there. Like yeah, he, he still goes to events. He, do, he got um, a crew fest you have every year. So yeah. It's a big deal. We have a lot of professional athletes come out, show love, you know, just being back to the community. What, are you feeling some of that responsibility now yourself? Like when you come from a place like Pahokee, are you feeling, hey, I know I'm playing in Baltimore, but I need, I know these kids down there are looking up to me the way that I looked up to Anquan, and I need to. I, I need to, to, to be responsible. I need to be a role model for those types of kids. Always, always. I try to, um, you know, when I go back, I try to sit down and talk to the young high school guys who are um, current athletes and, you know, try to show them a way and let them know, like, it's, it's better things in life yeah. outside of Pahokee. And, um, you ain't got to really play football. Wait, you mean there's better things than Pahokee? I'm yeah. struggling with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling. Pahokee, Pahokee is like a trap, man. You, know, <laughs> you ain't going to leave, man. <laughs> you literally mean trap because you actually get bogged down in the swamp. Yes. You actually take yeah. a, a step and you're caught in the swamp and you can't go caught. anywhere. Like you in a pot full of crabs. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. All right, uh, uh, Brian. Purnell went through a, 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 a bit of a position change, although it's kind of changed again during the course of the lead of the training camp. When you see uh, someone like Purnell, you talked so much about Michael Orr last year and what he did moving from one position to another, and you've spoken so glowingly about that. What does it say about a young man like Purnell, uh, another, by the way, world champion, yeah. Purnell McPhee? That's not his girlfriend. What what does it say to you when you see someone you know say hey I'll go do it yeah I'll, I'll work that hard whatever it is that you that let you know that they're not selfish and that they're willing to do whatever's, whatever's best for the team and um, get to the team first and you know do what's best for the team so I appreciate people like that. Now how strange was it sort of going through all that and one position one day another position the next day like what, what, what are you even comfortable yeah. now or are you still sort of like. Where are you gonna line me up this time? I mean, it, it, it's, it's it's reality again. You know, um, coming in and coach, hey man, you gotta uh, go play linebacker. And I sucked it up, man. I said, okay, <laughs> and then um, looked at who I was behind, Terrell Suggs. Ain't no wrong with learning from him. You yeah. Know? I learned thing. I learned new things every day. Like he taught me something new today, and you know, every day is a um, working process. What did he teach you today? Oh. Uh, how to, <laughs> how to survive that heat. <laughs> uh, it was, how it was there? baking, wasn't it? It was like you guys were training camp again. Nah, he, to, he told me how to, he was teaching me something about uh, how to play with your eyes, man. Like, just don't look at your man. Take a, When you're looking at your man, take a, a peek at the man on the side. And you know, it's just like reading the book. He told me, like, when you read it, 
read it, pay attention to it, it'll, it'll, show, it'll tell you everything. That's cool. You everything. And you know you learned everything. You went, went in the film room, you were like, hey, coach, stop. Grab the, the, um, the lazy and what the coach is in. You know, it's just a great experience when you're learning from the guys. This, so. this is so weird to me. I'm telling you guys, I, I'm not telling you I know Terrell like you guys do, because obviously I don't, but I've seen Terrell. He's a goof. He's the class clown. He's me when I was in high school. That's he's the guy that gets up and does silly things and pulls his pants down in front of everybody. Uh, How can you take him seriously when he starts being Mr. Football Coach? You know how to turn it on and turn it on. Being I mean, like all of us, you know how to turn it on and turn it off. And he's one of a kind. I can say that because he could be in the middle of a play and practice and not dance. Yeah. Right. Why is he saying that? And singing too. <laughs> He's always singing. He always sings coming out of practice. Field. Yeah. And it's always weird stuff. Like, it's not like even... opera songs and stuff. Yeah. Dude, he was singing Celine Dion one day when he walked out. This is not even a joke. He walked out in the practice field singing the song from Titanic. And I'm not even kidding about that. I like look at him like, what the hell is that? He's a weird dude. He's, I mean, and I get it. But I mean, there's got to be a moment where he's in the middle of talking about something where you're expecting that he's going to be in the middle of teaching you something and then he's just going to start singing anyway, right? <laughs> That's a different guy. <laughs> he real different. Tell me about uh, going up against Pinnell in practice, Brian. Tell me about uh, who he is, what he brings to the table. What's Pinnell's move? Like, what's, what do you have to watch out for with Pinnell? Pinnell does his move. He comes off the ball, and then he does like this stutter sometimes, and he might go inside and give it to him, and he might not be here in the back outside, too. So he does a like, little stutter thing that kind of makes him try to stop. He wants you to stop your feet, I believe. Okay. And then he didn't do what he wanted to do. Is that pretty good scouting report for now? Yeah. Especially, especially on, on the right side of the defense. Yeah, that, that's my favorite move. All right, so what is it now? How, when you know that you're matched up, if you're matched up against Brian McKinney, what are you doing when you're matched up against him? What's, what's, how is it that you think you can get around him? You see how big this guy is? He's either beat him to the point or go through him or try to go through him or beat him inside. That doesn't sound like it'd be that easy either, yeah, by the man, way. Come on, man. He's sick, try to go through him. <laughs> I also see how big he is that way. Like, I don't think it's going to be easy <laughs> he, to just go through he him. Like, he can show the pass, he's like 10 times bigger. <laughs> That is true, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's like not even. Yeah. yeah, like I saw you in the locker room today. I'm like, you know, he doesn't look as big as he normally does. Like, he doesn't look quite as intimidating. And then I see, you, I'm like, nope, yep, that's still the same guy. That's still the same guy. He is a mammoth, mammoth man. All right, uh, let's grab a break. We're gonna come back and do one more segment. Uh, Pernell McPhee has joined us. Brian McKinney is out here. Make some noise for our world champion, Paul the Ravens. <laughs> Alright, so Brian, you know, everybody loves oh uh, hearing you do the reads. I thought I was going to get away with this. No, you always have to do the reads. It's the way that it works, alright? Sometimes we make you guess him too. Pernell maybe might be. He's already shaking his head like, uh, that's not my life, man. Alright, so uh, one. talk up Fremont Mortgage for us if you like, alright? This one? Yeah, that one right there. Okay. If you're looking to refinance or buy a home, don't make a 30 year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. For the record, low interest rates, free my mortgage at 1-800-955-8508. Never, never application fee. Underwriting processes and closing are all done in office. With rates at record low, this will be the last mortgage you ever take out. Why risk for someone else? Call free my, free my mortgage at 1-800-955-8508 or visit freemymortgage.com. And you guys see? Yeah, NMLS 1071. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Brian McKinney. Yeah, right. Remember, you gotta say thank you if you think at the end of the legalese. And I need to tell everybody about ABC. I don't know. Know. <laughs> you want to practice? Well, we can give you practice. Oh, see no, no. I, I hate it now. Uh, by the way, I'm the same way on the radio sometimes. Like I start reading through the read and then I start thinking about something else. Like I see something like the, the goofy Jimmy Kimmel twerking video. Did you guys see that by the way? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Right. Just take it over. We'll yeah. see it first. <laughs> oh, we can show it to you. We'll find it. Someone's got a phone up here. You guys have to Hey, if you're planning a party or family get-together to close out the summer, ABC Rental in Rosedale can help make your party the best on the block. 
dunk tanks, basketball shootout, cornhole, tents, tables, chairs, you name it, ABC Rental has it, and they'll rent anything to you for a special WNST 10% discount. If you're sprucing up your lawn and garden, ABC Rental can help you with that too. Appealing to homeowners and contractors alike, ABC Rental in Rosedale has it all. 7001 Golden Ring Road, right off exit 35A. Give them a call at 410-780-0900 and check out their very large inventory at abcrentalstore.com. 410-780-0900 and abcrentalstore.com. Gotta break more with Brian McKinney and Pernell and Fee. We can talk to you. No, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Yes, That's why you play football and I'm so <laughs> If I was good at football, I'd come out and run Oklahoma drills with you. I'm not good at that. I'm good at this. That's why I do this. One more segment to go. Brian McKinney, Pernell and Fee, live out here at Greenmount Station in Carroll County. This is WNSP.net. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. 